Hello, MathMind Collective, and welcome to another episode of the Hypno Sales Show. Today, we're going to be talking about logical levels. So many of you that know me, have worked with me, or uh, know about my, my trainings and stuff, you probably have already trained you on this in the past. And you, you know, a lot of you have been asking for me to create the video for the logical levels model so you could capture it here on this channel that you're watching it on or listening to in this podcast that you're listening to now. Um, so this is, uh, I kind of adopted this or adapted this from uh, the world of therapy. In the world of uh, therapists that are working with patients that have uh, different kinds of issues they're working on, typically logical levels it model is a tool that they will use to try to really figure out what the root cause of what the real problem is in the patient in order to figure out what's the right therapy to use to help them correct the issue that they're having. So I adopted this and adapted this to my own, in my own world of the business world, sales, pre-sales, post-sales world, in my customer-facing role, which hopefully you have a customer-facing role. That's why you're watching this series or these HypnoSales series, is to understand things like these tools that you can use. Um, you probably have had those situations with customers where you're trying to figure out like where is the issue or what are they really trying to say. Um, for example, if you're in a pre-sales mode, you're trying to determine and discover, usually with a discovery meeting up front, you know, what is the use case? What do they have budget? What are they trying to do? Why are they trying to do it, et cetera? You're trying to discover that to qualify it, to qualify if it's even worth your time to spend with them, you and other resources you bring into the, into the process if it's worth it, if they're going to have, let's say they have money to buy it, but they can't articulate exactly the use case or the business case, then you may disqualify it, you know, because it's not congruent and it's not worth your time. Versus if they tell you exactly what they want and everything is congruent, everything matches up, then you move forward and typically you will, those are the opportunities that you'll win and the client's happy and you're happy. And then post-sale, another example would be, you know, then now you have to implement the particular product or service that they purchased from you. And so that team, if you're in a customer facing role, like, you know, support or professional services or customer success, you got to figure out like, you know, what do you want to do first, second and third? Like what order? We got to manage this project project of implementing in phases. So what are you going to be happy with first, second, or third, et cetera. And so you have to discover and figure that out in order to scope it, in order to plan it. So, so in your customer facing role, you're doing this all the time. And I use logical levels as a way, as a standard way for me to be able to figure out if everything is congruent, what they're telling me, and does everything line up so I can feel comfortable to help them feel comfortable with the experience that we will deliver for them, either pre or post sale or both. Okay. So the way this works, it's a hierarchy. So if you're listening on the podcast, your the first top level is identity, identity. Then it's followed by the second level, which it's connected. So each level here is connected to the one below it. And then vice versa, the one below is connected to the one above. So they're like interconnected in the sequence. Okay. Identity is first. Belief is second level. Third level is capability. Fourth level is behavior. And fifth level is environment, environment. So they're they're all connected to each other, um, and I'll draw a little a little up and down arrows here, so you can kind of see one connects to the one above and below it. They're all connected together. Now, identity. What is identity? Well, that's the person or team or company you're talking with. So, depending on the context, identity will be either a group of people or it'll be a single person. And this is important because uh, if you're going to figure out this hierarchy of logical levels, you need to know. Uh, who you're talking with first, if it's a person or if it's a whole group or a whole company. So that identity is the who. So I'm going to put the word who here to remind ourselves that this is answering the question, who are we talking with? Who are we talking with? That's the identity. All right. Now the identity then affects and has a belief. So a who has a belief about something, or you can also interchange the word belief with reasoning or reason. Okay. They have a reason or a belief. And that is the why. Okay, so somebody or a person play a person or a group of people or a who, and they have a reason or a belief, which is a why. Okay. Um, then next, um, uh, for every belief that this who has, they have they want a capability to either be they want to be capable of something. They want to have an ability or capability to do something 
Okay, so this is a how. So this is how they want things to work. They want it to work this way. They want this capability or they don't want this capability or um, they have a capability or they don't have a capability. So they don't have a how, there's no how dictating that. And then below that, once they have a how, or if they don't have a how, that will influence and have a direct correlation with the behavior of the people that work for them, the people on their team. Um, so this is the what. So what they want to have happen is, is a behavior. That's a behavior, that's a resulting behavior based on the capability that they have or don't have. That's why it's above it. Capability dictates, basically. It, it influences or dictates or predicates behavior, like what they're gonna do or not do. It could be either one, positive or negative. And then finally, when uh, environment is when and where these things happen. So, so when and where is the environment. When does this occur? Where does it occur? That's the environment in which it happens. Like in other words, if I go back up from the bottom to the top, when and where things happen, these what things, these behaviors happen in this environment because of this capability that we believe we need or don't need. And we, meaning who, we or one person, it could be just like the leader, the top visionary person at the company could be the who and dictate that. Now every who, has a why, and for every why, there's one or more hows. So it can be multiple, one to many, right? For every one who, there's one or more whys, reasons or beliefs. And for each one of those reasons or beliefs, there is a one or more hows or capabilities that they want to have. And for each one of those capabilities, it will dictate a specific type of behavior that happens within a specific type of environment, when and where, okay? Now, Obviously, these are all of our who, what, when, where, why, how questions. So this is how this works. I use a question appropriate for the level that I'm trying to discover on. So I have to keep this in mind. Everything's related from the top down like this, and everything has to be congruent. It all has to connect. And this is where a lot of the times when it, before I knew this model, I would make these mistakes or I've worked with other salespeople or other um, customer facing roles, uh, professional services or customer success or SE, you know, pre-sales engineers, solution engineers that make these kind of mistakes because they would ask maybe uh, how questions, what questions, maybe ask who, but they might not ask why. And it, it always bugged me why they wouldn't ask why. And I realized that a lot of the time everyone is assuming why we're doing these things. We're assuming why they're telling us they want certain capabilities and they want it to happen when and where, certain environments and certain behaviors. We're assuming some things. Or we might assume the behavior based on hearing the answers to some of the other questions at the other levels. We fill it in. We can't help ourselves. Subconsciously, we're going to fill in what we assume the other things in order to make sure the story all matches up and that everything is congruent from the who, why, how, what, and when, where it all matches up. Now, uh, when I discovered that we were making these kind of mistakes where we were asking some certain questions and then assuming the others, that's usually why we would lose a deal or we would kind of mess up an implementation post-sale. We would get it wrong and it was, we'd scope it wrong or we would set the wrong expectations because we thought we knew what these different uh, answers were, but we were assuming some of these things. So I started using this model and started asking the questions explicitly and making sure that in my mind I could connect it up each piece. So I would divide this up and I would make sure that when I asked these things, they all lined up like this perfectly. And if they didn't, then I would figure out where it went wrong and I would try to catch it early and then go uh, ask those questions and make sure I wasn't, even if it, even if it made me feel kind of dumb, to like, yeah, everybody knows that's the reason. Everyone knows that's the behavior they want. Like I would just set expectations, you know, look, I know we're probably assuming this, but I'd like to just clarify and make sure that this is the behavior that you want for your teams. Or I want to make sure this is why we're doing this. And so some things would happen that kind of enforced uh, or, or enlightened in me that this was actually something very valuable. And, um, and what, it would, what would happen is, is I would actually ask uh, the capability question, like, how do you want this to work? And then I would say, why do you want it to work this way? And then this is the answer I'd get. Oh, I don't want it to work that way. My boss does. I could care less. I, don't, I, could, I couldn't care less, right? I don't really care. Um, but my boss does. So then I would realize their reasoning or their belief wasn't theirs. It was their boss's. 
So then I would realize I have a whole nother sequence that I got to do with their boss, right? I need to go talk to a different who, figure out what that boss wants, what their boss wants, what they believe, which is what this person's telling me that I'm assuming is their belief, but it's really their bosses. And then I want to ask the boss what capabilities the boss wants or the behaviors they want those capabilities to drive for the organization and then when and where they want those to happen. And funny enough, when I would do that, sometimes those answers would be different than the person that I'm talking to right now, like a champion or a contact I have that's given me information. And I'm assuming all of these things are lined up and it's not for them. They don't really care about the belief. It's not their belief. They want something completely different, but it's their boss telling them. And their boss really has these other, other things that they want answers to down here, but they may not be even be telling the person I'm talking to. And then everything's incongruent. And that's why things go sideways. That's why things don't work out sometimes because you're trying to assume it all lines up and that the person you're talking with or the team you're talking with, everything lines up. And it may be a mixture of answers that come from different hierarchies, different logical levels for different who's. So that's why I always try to go and verify, is this, are you the person or is it somebody else? Is this your belief? Is this your why or is it somebody else's? And if so, I need to, you need to introduce me to them and I need to figure this out. And then sometimes I might even tell my contacts about this logical level and say, I've got to get these answers, these, all these answers, and I've got to line it up. Like I'll teach them this model so then they can help me go be a good champion and, and find the answers from the different. And it's amazing if you can get a champion doing this and teach them this tool and they go do it, they'll, they'll, they'll give you all of the congruencies or incongruencies and you can make a better call. You can decide if it really is going to close this quarter, next quarter, or if you need to disqualify. Um, but I'm always figuring, I'm trying to figure out the how, what, when, and where with every single group or person who all the way down. I'm always putting these together and asking these questions and making sure everything is lined up and congruent. So simple idea, again, really enlightening if you've never used this before. Just I would encourage you to ask all the different questions. Even if you think you're assuming something, just ask the question anyway and just say, look, I know we might be assuming this. Just say it like this. We might be assuming this. But I want to make sure we're, we're clear on this. Who, why, how, what, when, where. Like get all the questions from that person and make sure that if there's nobody else involved or if you need someone else involved, you can go find that person and do the same thing with that person or that team or, what, or whoever it is and whatever it is and why it is and how it is and when and where it is. You want to find all of those things in all of those cases and it will increase your efficiency and increase your probability and chances of having a great customer experience from the beginning all the way to the end, pre-sale all the way to post-sale if you do it consistently. Anyway, thanks for watching today's episode. I know you found value. I hope you will share this right now with somebody else that finds value in it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next Hypno Sales Show.